There are multiple ways to create liquid effects on canvas. I usually prefer to use the simplest way possible by applying CSS filter property to the canvas element itself. The problem is that when I do that, it applies to everything drawn on canvas. And if you have any fine details in your effect, like in this case, we have these sharp thin lines connecting the particles, applying a filter would make the lines practically invisible. What if I want to liquefy the particles and keep the lines intact? It's actually very easy because we can layer multiple canvas elements on top of each other and choose what gets drawn on which one. This is a bonus experimental section of Particle Systems Masterclass. I structured the series in a way where we build the basic shared code base ones and from there we take it in many different directions, always starting from that same point. For that reason, you can just build the base code with me or download it in the resources section below and then you can skip around the playlist and do the projects in any order or only do the projects you like. If you want to build this project from scratch with me, follow the steps in the video description. Have fun! CSS filter property is a powerful tool that we can use to achieve many different kinds of effects. If I apply blur, the entire canvas gets blurry as expected. It becomes more interesting if we chain multiple filters. For example, I can sharpen the blurred shape using contrast and we will get a sticky liquid effect. Notice that the canvas has a background color defined. It's important here for the liquid effect to work. Hmm. First of all, I will get rid of the white edges around the canvas by setting body background to black. Notice that the lines connecting the particles are now completely gone. They are too thin so when we blur and sharpen them, they disappear. Even some smaller particles probably disappeared for us. This effect needs big bulky shapes. I make the particles larger. The filter effect gets a bit weird when particles are too close to the edges of canvas, so I will create some padding to prevent the particles to travel all the way from edge to edge. I want that value to be relative to particle radius and to save us some performance, I will pre-calculate that value once and I will reuse it rather than make JavaScript calculate it over and over for each particle 60 times per second. Buffer will be, let's say, radius of the particle times 4. Then I apply it in the code block that handles bouncing from the edges here, 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 here and here. In eight places, I replace this.radius with this.buffer. Now we have some space between particles and the edges of canvas area. The liquid filter works with some colors, but to get the best effect, we need the highest possible contrast. I will actually remove the gradient and I will set fill style to white. White particles against the black canvas background. If you are not getting the same result, make sure you put background color on your canvas element in CSS. In the resize method, I also have to set fill style to white and remove the gradient code. When I resize, it works great. When I remove the filter, you can see we have just normal circular particles connected with thin semi-transparent lines. Applying the filter will blur and sharpen the particles. It will liquefy them and it will make the lines connecting them invisible. They are too thin to survive being blurred and sharpened like this. What if I want liquid particles, but I also want to keep the sharp thin lines? It's easy. We can just use a second canvas element. We need that second canvas in this case because CSS filter will always apply to the entire canvas element. It's not possible to use it to target only specific shapes. Now we have two canvas elements, canvas with an ID of canvas 1 and another one with an ID of canvas 2. I want both canvas elements to be positioned on top of each other, so I use general canvas selector to target both of them and set them to the same absolute position on my web page. Only the canvas with an ID of canvas 1 will have a black background and CSS filter applied. There is another way to liquefy particles without the need of having background color on canvas element, which might be necessary if you're doing some type of layering. The way we do that would be with an inline SVG filter. Ask me about that in the comments if you want to know more. Now I can just copy this code block to bring that second canvas into our JavaScript code base. Variable I call canvas2 and I point it towards the element using its ID, as usual. 
ctx2 context2 is canvas2 dot get context to the. We also make canvas2 full screen by setting its width and height. So now, when I want to draw on canvas1, I use ctx. If I want to draw on canvas2, I use ctx2. I pass handle particles method both ctx and ctx2 as arguments. Here we make sure those values are expected and we will give them variable names context and context2. I want the lines to be drawn on canvas2, the second canvas that doesn't have a liquid filter applied to it. So I pass connect particles method context2 to specify which canvas we want to draw on. We need to make sure we clear old paint on canvas2 between every animation frame using built-in clear rectangle method. Okay, I can say I'm done because this is already super cool. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like the lines are oil in water repelling the black liquid around it. This is what I call creative coding. I didn't know it was going to look like that. <laughs> I hope you're getting some value today. Click like if you do. We can make the particles react to mouse in a different way. For example, if I swap distance and mouse radius here like this. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. And now I invert horizontal push force. Suddenly, when I click the mouse button, we are sucking the particles towards it from left and right on the horizontal x-axis. This is fun to click and play with. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's do the same for the vertical y-axis as well. Now it looks like we are creating a gravity point and when we click the mouse, particles become attracted to it and they start moving towards it. We are also getting this nice light bounce back and forth because of the physics we applied earlier. We can adjust the friction value which will affect the elasticity and overall force of the movement. You can apply different values and combinations here if you want to experiment with motion and interactivity. Okay, this fill style and stroke style is on CTX, so it belongs to this canvas. And we will also declare stroke style for context too, like this. I set it to white. I can also set line width to 2 pixels. Drawing the effect on two separate canvas elements allows us to combine different features. In this case, we were able to liquefy the particles, but still keep the fine sharp lines that connect them intact. Can you come up with any other use cases for this technique? If you want more particle effects, you might like these tutorials. With each class, we are learning more and more tips and tricks. Try to combine them in different ways if you want. You might come up with something new and unique. I hope you have fun with your creative coding experiments. Click the like if you found some value.